In this tutorial, we will be walking through the process of using an iClone generated character with the Animate 3D custom character feature. Then we will use the downloaded animation results and import them back into iClone. We are going to be using the Reillusion Conversion and Editing Tool 3D Exchange to assist us with this process. The animations we will be importing are from the DeepMotion Animate 3D web service. Animate 3D is an AI-powered motion capture solution by DeepMotion that turns videos that you can find online or capture from a personal camera and turns it into a 3D animation, ready to download in a few minutes. You can try it free and create up to one minute of animation per month with a freemium subscription. Your minutes reset monthly so you can come back and try out new updates and features as they're released. All right, onto our iClone walkthrough. Step one, we're going to send our character back to iClone from the iClone character creator. Step two is to export your character file. Animate 3D currently supports FBX character files at this time. There are two ways to export your character as an FBX file. The first way is to export the file from 3D Exchange. However, this is not recommended. We actually recommend exporting directly from iClone. Once you click Export, you'll want to change some settings. Step three, we'll be updating our export settings. Click on the three dots in the top right-hand corner and check the box Preserve Bone Names CC Base. This will make sure that the bone names don't change during the export process, which is important for the character to work correctly with Animate 3D. Now, under Target Tool Preset, you can select Maya as a default. Also be sure to embed textures so that you'll see the textures in the Animate 3D Previewer. Great, now we're ready to export. Once you do see your export, we can move over to Animate 3D. Make sure, again, that it's FBX. Step four will be to create your animation. Once you're signed into your Animate 3D account, go ahead and start creating a new animation. In this first section, there are two character types you can choose from. Default, we'll use the generic Animate 3D models, but we want to upload our own custom characters, so navigate to custom. On the new custom character upload page, you will notice all the recommended guidelines for making sure your custom character turns out correctly below. DeepMotion has made sure this process works well with the iClone character creator, so we don't need to worry about those at this time. So go ahead and upload your iClone character that you exported as an FBX. Now we're going to upload our source video that we want to turn into an animation. It's important to note the capture guidelines below. Following these guidelines will ensure the best animation results possible. There are a variety of settings to check out for your animations. Take your time and figure out what you'd like. The physics filter setting, for example, helps keep mesh surfaces on your character from intersecting. After a couple of minutes, you'll get to see your animation in real time in this previewer. You can pan around and get a sense of how it turned out. Step five is to download your animation as an FBX file. Once you're happy with your animation, click on the download button under the previewer and choose FBX. You should see it download right away. For step six, we are going to import our animation into 3D Exchange with the animation files that we just downloaded. To do this, you'll start by clicking on your character, then navigate to the modify window and under 3D Exchange, click the edit in 3D Exchange button. Once your character loads into 3D Exchange, we are then going to import our animation recreated from Animate 3D. Navigate to the Modify window and go to the Animation section. Under here, you will want to click the Import button. In your animation package from Animate 3D, you will see multiple files. You're going to want the version without the T-Pose animation. Once you click on it, you're going to want to set the sample per second to your correct frame rate. In my case, it's 60. You can then choose to smooth the curve based on your preference, then click OK when you're done. Now your animation will be imported onto this character. Because our imported character and the iClone characters match, this process should finish without any issues. And there's our animation. For step seven, we'll be importing our animation back into iClone. To do this, under the same animation section you use to import, navigate down to apply to iClone. 
Now switch over to iClone. You will see it load and can now see it's posed differently to match the first frame of our animation. If you open up the timeline, you can now see that we have an animation clip. Now from here, you might have a need to add multiple animations onto your same character. So I'm going to go through the process of adding another animation onto the one we have already imported. So step eight, we'll be adding another animation onto your character. To prepare our timeline for the new animation, we're going to want to add more frames so that more animation can fit. To do this, first set your playhead to the end of your first animation. Then navigate to the project settings. From here, you can set the total frames. I'm going to set it to 4000 to give us enough room. You can see there are now more frames in your timeline and actually the first animation can now finish. Now go back to 3D exchange and follow the process from step six to import another animation. We are going to want to keep all the same settings as before. You can see that the animation has imported. From here, you're going to double click on this new animation under the motion library list and now apply it to iClone. Okay, sometimes you might get this error. For some reason, it was converted to a non-standard character. To get around this, you're going to want to reset by closing out of 3D Exchange, go back to iClone and click on Edit in 3D Exchange again. Now follow the same process we just did by importing your second animation clip. Select it again under the motion library and apply to iClone. Now you'll see that the second clip is also imported and both animations are now back to back. You can now proceed to edit them as you like. Thank you for following along. We hope this was helpful and that you're able to easily use your Animate 3D animations with iClone. Remember that if you sign up, you get a full free minute of animation every month for you to play with. Keep checking back for all of our updates and new features for the platform.